Hmm, so here's a challenge for you guys. Uh, I'll reveal clues as to what this absolute death trap, and it really is a death trap, is as this video goes on. And I'm just actually realising that, that that's the first clue. The element is still very, very hot because I just had it plugged in recently at 240 volts and it's a 2 kilowatt element. I just wanted to check the power rating and in the short time it took just to check the power rating, it got hot enough to smoke. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, it's a heating element. It's uh, not earth. I I'm just looking at that and it still looks red hot, but I've obviously made a terrible fashion faux pas here. Uh, I was a, a bit chilly tonight because, the you know, the it's middle of winter and I just did what I do when I'm cold and stick on a pair of overalls just because it's a handy thing to do. I'm not sure that sticking on a pair of bright orange high-vis railway overalls was really the best best choice. Completely reflective tape, so uh, that's why there's an orange tint over everything. Uh, overalls, not just for work. They're the quintessential fashion accessory for the discerning blue-collar bear. But anyway, back to the subject in hand, this red-hot heating element. And uh, it's not earth. That's another clue. I mean, technically speaking, something like this should be earth. But uh, it's also... You know, you can't really operate it in open air, or it would get far too hot and it would probably fail. So, clearly designed to be operated under a liquid of sorts. Uh, what other clues can I give about this? Yes, I can, I can give another clue. The liquid was uh, to be heated up to a specific temperature, quite a large volume of liquid. Um, so a thermocouple was used to get the exact temperature, because too hot would have been quite unpleasant. There's another clue. And you really, really do not. I mean, this was uh, just done for fun and uh, a function at the time. It was just a, a silly project and it's not something you'd want to do yourself, particularly if you tried using something of this with family around or MD who was electrically non-inclined or, or you had a drink or something like that. Um, so have you, have you made a guess what it is yet? I'll give you a clue that it was going to heat water, lots of water. And it came about at very short notice. It was a spontaneous just desire to have a large amount of hot water. And it actually happened one winter when I'd been working really long hours and I came back, I was soaked, absolutely drenched. I'd been working outdoors. Oh, loads of electrical stuff. It was just like trying to meet a deadline and, you know, no choice, the weather was terrible, just had to work through it anyway to get everything ready. And nor normally uh, when I'd get in, I'd just have a hot shower because I've got an electric shower and that's quite handy. Uh, you can just like, yeah, turn it on, instant hot water. But I just suddenly really decided for absolutely no reason at all that I just wanted a large, hot, deep bath. Now, technically speaking, I could have turned the immersion heater on uh, and just heated all the water of the house and then poured the bath, but it only tends to give you half a bath. It's not that great. And also, because it was the dead of winter and because I spend, I, I used to spend a chunk of time, that's when I was in Glasgow, um, visiting family uh, for winter, uh, I used to uh, end up shutting everything off in the house, turning the water off, and one year when I was over on the Isle of Man, we had just the worst winter imaginable, and uh, Glasgow froze up solid, and that's when I realised that, you know, I'm glad I turned the water off, because the pipework did freeze. It didn't split, it just froze up. And there was one weak part that the, the company had put the plumbing in when the place was done, uh, had insulated most of the pipework, but there was a bit that was just completely inaccessible that also had a draft from a sort of roof vent, sort of just the edge of the roof where the air came under. And uh, it tended to just that tiny little pipe that was just completely unreachable used to freeze up. So in the end, uh, most windows I've just ended up just leaving the cold, the hot water off. It, it was no great deal. I didn't use it. I didn't really use the bath and so on with at that time used the shower. And by the time the water had come from the immersion tank and the heater to the kitchen, uh, you'd finish whatever you're doing anyway. It just took so long for the hot water to get there. So this time I just suddenly realized I want a hot bath and I thought, you know, just, do you know what would be really fun? Throwing a heating arm in the bath and just heating the water in the bath. And this does come with some hazards. Well, electrocution primarily. 
there is an RCD protecting the, you know, the house, so that wasn't, you know, super mega issue. And I thought, well, the water in Scotland is very pure and clean, and it's not terribly conductive. Um, also, um, I, I, could, I was thinking, what can I use an element? I thought I could buy a cheap kettle from Asda, which is a local Walmart that was nearby. So I headed out and I got the heating element, and uh, a kettle, should I say, and just took the heating element out. It's very modular. It's a good source for a heating element, very cheap source of a, a high power heating element. And I thought, well, I can't really earth this because it'll just, you know, the earth being so close to these connections and it, I can't really make them fully waterproof easily. And it would just, you know, run the risk of tripping. So uh, I thought I just wouldn't bother earthing it because the the bath was fiberglass and it was all plastic piping in the drainage. So it wasn't going to leak much to earth, so to speak. And uh, so I put it into this metal frame to keep it away from the fiberglass base because that would have been quite dramatic if I'd just thrown an element in its own. And I have to say, this did an absolutely incredible job of heating the bath. It was quite... Nice, because I filled the bath with cold water, which made it really fast to fill, right up to, you know, as high as I could go with me getting in without it spilling everywhere. And when this heating element was on, you saw all the thermal convection currents flowing up. Uh, it was actually so nice that I got a light and pointed it at it just to actually project through that, because it was a nice, it lit the whole bath up and it just had these swirling effects in it. And of course, I, I, the thermocouple was because I didn't really wish to stick my finger in the bath while this thing was in it. And you have to consider, the, you know, what could have happened. Well, leakage currents, technically speaking, current could have travelled through the water if, you know, it had just gone into the live connection and it could have lived up the plumbing and then killed all my neighbours. Highly unlikely, but, uh, you know, you have to allow for things that could happen. It was a calculated risk. Um, and of course there was the earth leakage protection uh, incorporated so it wasn't going to be a major thing and it did an absolutely stellar job. I took it right up to the temperature that it was just barely tolerable to get in and uh, it was fantastic but uh, tempting as it is the idea of making one of these it, it, it really is not a good idea. Um, it, you know it was kind of done for fun, it was done for silliness um, and at the time, it was a, it, it just, yeah, it was, it was just a silly, fun project. Partly done because it was slightly dangerous. It's a mystery object, a extremely foolish mystery object, but nonetheless a very functional foolish object that I have brought with me over to Isle of Man. That's even more foolish, just because I quite liked it. So, uh, yeah, don't build one of these at all, ever. Death traps, but uh, quite fun anyway.